Okay, so the Arizona Cardinals, they traded up from, uh, you know, first they traded down, they were at three, and then go trade back up to make sure that they get not Jalen Carter, but instead Paris Johnson Jr., which was, that was a surprise to me. I don't, I, again, I thought Jalen Carter was going to be the guy, uh, but I, I think, that, again, I didn't get to talk to him pre-draft. Maybe people just don't love the off-the-field stuff and weren't too impressed with his answers. So there's two ways to talk about this selection. There is the the pick itself of Paris Johnson, which, you know, uh, by the way, uh, I actually have a, a film study on now. So not we're not only doing uh, my thoughts, but a film study coming up uh, in the second half of this video. So make sure you stay tuned for that uh, or skip ahead if you don't want to hear what I have to say about my thoughts on the pick. But come on, uh, hang around. Uh, listen to what I have to say. First, there's the, the trade itself. The trade, uh, the Cardinals end up uh, giving up pick number uh, 12 and 34 for pick number six. So they basically, they lose uh, a very early second round pick. That's the third pick in the second round, because keep in mind, only 31 first round picks this year um, due to the Dolphins losing one. Um, the So it's definitely a very, uh, I don't know, it, it's a bit of a surprise to me. Uh, I, I like Paris Johnson a lot as a player. I have no real issue. It's a bit higher that I think a lot of people thought he was going to go, which is why I think I'm a little bit surprised in, in this. But, you know, I think that maybe they were a little bit worried. The Jets who or the Packers or the, you know, uh, the Patriots, all teams who draft after the Cardinals would maybe hurry, you know, they would trade up and try to make something like that happen. And then they'd be stuck with maybe someone they don't love as much. Uh, Paris Johnson, a lot of people feel like is the number one tackle. But, you know, again, on a consensus big board, he was pick 13. They had the 12th pick. Uh, to me, I would have stayed pat. And if you don't get the guy, your guy, that's not the end of the world is kind of how I view it. Um, so that's, that's my opinion on the trade up. That being said, I like getting the player, and I don't necessarily hate the the player. I, I think it's a bit early, but I think that this is a real, uh, a real good move to help out Kyler Murray and to help out the, the the offensive line. Now, again, Josh Jones and DJ Humphreys, I think, are fine tackles. Uh, you know, you also have, of course, uh, the great Kelvin Beecham uh, there as well on a tackle position. They also added Dennis Daly. You do not want to have to have Dennis Daly play. Uh, but you know what? If they really like uh, Johnson and feel like he can be a star tackle, that's the value of it. And that's why I don't necessarily hate it. But I, I am a little bit surprised. I think for me, I would have gone with Jalen Carter, or I really would have just stayed pat and maybe tried to get a tackle with pick number 12. I think for whatever reason, they probably didn't feel like that pick was going there. So uh, it's our first, I guess, official reach of the night, just given the fact that where he was on the consensus big board of he was number 13, he goes at six. That is a significant reach from the consensus big board, if that's something you value. Um, but again, there's always that argument, right, of do you end up following the consensus and making sure that you just get a good, uh, get the best player available, or do you sit here and say, you know what, our board is different, we're just going to get our player, and we're even going to move up to make it happen. I almost wonder, too, if, you know, with the trade down, they kind of felt more empowered that they could then trade back up, because, like, hey, we still ended up with extra value, so they got their guy and got overall value. I think as a whole, this has been a win for the Cardinals, uh, just given how much value they got trading down in the first place. Uh, did not have to give up as much trading back up at this point. So definitely a very, very fascinating move. But yeah, let's talk about Johnson as a player. Because I, like I, I really, you know, I want to shift gears and say, even though I have a little bit of reservations about the move, I think they got a great player. And l let me explain why. So first, his PFF page, which is good. It's not elite, but it's good. Again, you see that for the, the snap count is important. Really just the two years, which were both solid, and he did see, see a step up from 2021 to 2022. Now, I think you'd maybe like to see the 83 grade be a tad higher, uh, just for given where people are talking about him and how valuable he is, but that's it. it it's it's good still. It, this is not a uh, con massive concern for me or anything like that. These are the things that I pay attention to when I'm evaluating offensive linemen. The reality is this stuff is the best predictor in seeing if guys who are drafted in the first round will be bust or not bust is typically did they have good analytics in college and Paris Johnson checks every box. I mean, you look at over 
the, the right, uh, the little dot on the bar there, the further towards the right it is, the better the player is at each of those things. And you see, it's all the way to the right in basically every single one of those categories. So that's great to see. There's a reason why plenty of people have him as their number one tackle in this draft class, and I totally get it. Uh, but we can't just use the stats to back that up, right? We got to look at film as well. So let's look at the film. So first, let's start off with this play. What's going to happen is it's a one-on-one -on -one block right there on that Iowa edge rusher. Watch how right when this play begins, you see the Iowa edge rusher. Uh, again, uh, trying to use a little bit of speed, it looks like, to get past Paris Johnson, but it's really not working at all. Johnson gets the hand placement he wants, and whenever he does that, it's game over, and he usually does that. So that's kind of what makes him really good is he's able to make these blocks and kind of, you know, in college, he really was someone you just trusted to win his one-on-one -on -one matchups, and he really did a great job. You also have something like this where what's going to happen is it's going to be a stunt that Iowa is running, which basically means that the, you know, again, uh, it's a little bit more complex than this, but basically the interior defensive lineman and the edge rusher on that side of the field swap positions right when this ball is snapped. They go, uh, you know, around. Uh, that's kind of what's going to happen. It's something that can definitely confuse offensive linemen, but watch how it's going to work with Johnson. Right when this play begins, you see that, I mean, they're able to pass it off and get Johnson to be in position to make this block very well. One slight issue, the guard is still blocking the guy he was lined up against, so he didn't really pick this up as well as maybe you would have liked. But again, we're not evaluating the whole uh, offensive line here. We're only evaluating Paris Johnson Jr., and I would say he did a very good job of reading this play. Now again, this play ends up with the quarterback taking a massive hit, losing the football, and uh, Iowa getting a touchdown out of it, so that's not good. But Paris Johnson did his part. That's all I'm really paying attention to. Also, going over to something like this, let's talk about the, the uh, running game a bit here because, you know, it's not just pass blocking. It's also run blocking. One-on-one -on -one block on the outside here. And watch how when this play begins. You see him, again, he gets the hand placement he wants, and he's really not going to lose in this spot. Watch how he is able to just, you know, uh, make that play and does not give up hardly anything there as they're able to make that block. So really good stuff here from Paris Johnson, I would say. And again, for offensive linemen, it's less about the highlights. It's less about what can you do well and more about how often do you do that well. And he does it. He uh, blocks well very often, which is what you got to like about him. Very much a, uh, you know, a high percentage guy. And really, I mean, I don't have really any critiques like here's another play uh it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block right here I, I i guess you could argue that maybe this is one of the critiques you could have watch out when this play begins see the edge rusher he's going up against uh is going to just try and bull rush him on this play as you see, he never really got the hand placement he exactly wanted to there and got driven back a little bit. That's maybe the one critique I have with Paris Johnson Jr. is that there's some room for improvement hands-wise, but it's not a massive issue for me. It really isn't. I think that there's just some room for improvement, and the guy's only 21. You expect him to get better uh, as he gets older, so uh, it's maybe a nitpick more so than a real critique of his game. I think he's really good, and to me, he does feel kind of like a can't-miss prospect a little bit. Uh, I think he's going to be very good in the NFL, and I I'd be very shocked if he, in a year from now, is not good. I mean, I'd legitimately be shocked if he has a bad rookie year. He feels like someone who will come in and be good right away. Now, again, sometimes guys just happen to take a year, so maybe that's a little bit unfair. But I think two years in, at least, he will be a good player in the NFL. I feel pretty confident about that. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on Johnson as a player. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.